Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 244. What are examiners looking for when they read your reference list? <laughs> oh, this is an interesting vlog, this one. I've loved writing this and it comes via request from one of my students, Tanya. Hello, Tanya. Tanya is moving through her cycle of 10 drafts and on draft three, she said to me, Tara, why are we spending so much time looking at my references? And I explained to her that we're spending so much time looking at her references because her examiners will spend so much time looking at her references. Every minute that you spend on references and referencing is a fantastic minute. Yeah. So references, your reference list or footnotes and bibliographies, depending on your disciplinary expertise, matter a great deal. And this vlog today is going to get real, real fast. We're going to look at why references matter, certainly. But what I wanted to show to you, and this was wonderful for me when I was writing this vlog, it was really interesting, to try and explain to students why references matter more than simply through referencing. So what do references actually signify for examiners simply beyond the references themselves? So when we check your references as an examiner, it's a way for us to check, to verify a series of characteristics, tropes, expertise, literacies far beyond the references themselves. Now I know I really do know that when you are assembling references, when you're checking references, it's pedantic, it's boring, it's really sad work. I get that. But what I want to try and show you today is that the time you spend on references, wow, that is valuable time. It is valuable, wow, to your examination process. So we're going to talk about the five key meanings of references and referencing beyond references and referencing. And I would like to also dedicate this vlog to my remarkable new student, Noma. Hi Noma. Noma is a transfer student who's joining us at Flinders and she's a privilege to supervise. And I know Noma is spending hours upon hours upon hours with her references. And I want to honour her. I want to honour her intelligence and her hard slog. And Noma, on those long, long nights when you've put your boys to bed and you're checking and you're checking and you're checking your references, I want you to know and I want to confirm for you in this vlog that that time away from your family is valuable, is important and will make a difference to your result. Okay, so let me show you today why references matter to examiners. Let's do it. Five. First one. What are we looking for as examiners? One. Academic literacies are in place. Academic literacies are in place. The first priority for an examiner when we open up a thesis is to check and to verify that academic literacies are present and revealed in the PhD student. So what does this mean? Academic literacies. Great phrase. Let's drill down a bit. So firstly, that is an assessment of your writing. So vocabulary, grammar, sentence construction, paragraph construction. We're also looking at the structure of the thesis, form and focus and content. Does it all fit together? But also a key component of academic literacies involves referencing. So what examiners are looking for, yes, absolutely, is correct referencing. So Pick a style, be consistent. So whether you're using an in-text mode or footnoting, be accurate. Accuracy. And every minute that you spend checking those references is a great minute. Every checking minute is a great minute. Next, I need you to make sure that every reference that is in your chapters is then in your reference list and or bibliography. Yes, examiners notice, and yes, examiners spot check. We check chapter, reference list, chapter, reference list. We do check that. So make sure that everything you reference is in your reference list. 
and don't rely on software to do that job for you. <laughs> you need to check it again and again and again. Then the next one, and wow, this is important, increasingly important, please check that your paraphrasing is accurate. Check that it is paraphrasing and it's not plagiarism and make sure there's no <laughs> overlap between those terms. And yes, this is where you can use text matching software to confirm the difference and check for yourself. So it is an information literacy tool. So do use that, particularly near the end of your drafting. And make sure that your paraphrasing is strong. Now, if your disciplines enable quotations, and a lot of disciplines do that, then you need to check those quotations. Check every single quotation because the examiners will check the accuracy of those quotations. So your references and referencing is a proxy and it's a proxy for the first moment that the examiner is moving through your thesis and what we are looking for is that you can control information and that you possess information literacy. You are demonstrating that you control references rather than referencing controlling you. Two, what are examiners looking for? Hello, we're looking for research and academic integrity. In research, is anything more important than research and academic integrity? No. Nothing's more important. We all have the right to information. Information is required for citizenship, no doubt. But when we're documenting the path from information to knowledge, then that is the function of a scholar. Information to knowledge requires a scholar to enable that movement. So when the right to information and the responsibilities of knowledge emerge, that is research integrity. In a PhD, you have to display both. You've got to have research integrity and academic integrity. So academic integrity, that your work is honest, fair, you respect the sources, you respect the knowledge of others, and you have a responsibility in the creation of information and you have responsibility in respecting the words of others. You have to demonstrate the appropriate strategies to act with academic integrity and that involves a deep respect of research ethics. You have to behave ethically, you have to gather your information ethically and you have to prove that, it must be transparent. But then you have to show that you possess information literacy, that you're using that information carefully and well, and you're able to move the information into knowledge creation. So what does this all mean? It means that you acknowledge the work of others, obviously, and you also know when you need to acknowledge the work of others. You understand the cost and the consequences of a copy and pasting culture and you address that in our culture, our academic culture. You understand what happens when you maybe take some information, you modify a graph, you modify some tables and you understand how to reference the information, acknowledge even where the information design came from and moving that information through to your thesis. You are able to acknowledge and reference the movement of form and content. You understand <laughs> the unicorn of information literacy, yes, self-plagiarism. So when you reference well and you show a wider acknowledgement of information and research literacy, you are demonstrating respect for knowledge, respect for your discipline, respect for your degree, and respect to your institution, respect to the university. So as you can see, this is also about understanding your reputation, but safeguarding your future. Let me explain. So I know while you're doing a PhD, everything is about the PhD, but let me just give you one example of how the decisions that you make today 
can have consequences on your future. David Robinson, the former Vice-Chancellor of Monash University, stepped down in 2002 after allegations of plagiarism emerged from work he published 30 years in the past. So he lost his job, lost his friends, lost his reputation. <laughs> but can I say, I just will finish this story. This story does also have a truly bizarre ending because after he stepped down, he was promoted to the chairman of the Victorian Education Research Network run by the Victorian universities. So, <laughs> so remember that these issues, intentional or unintentional, will follow you. So think, learn, reference, reflect. Think, learn, reference, reflect. Examiners are looking to see that you understand academic and research integrity. They're looking for it. They need to see that you know that knowledge must be respected in its context. Referencing confirms that you are a great scholar and you respect great scholarship. Okay, three, grasp of the disciplinary literature. References show that you understand the literature in your field. And this is a major issue for examiners. So do you hold expertise in your discipline? Now, sometimes this is described as disciplinary literacy, a phrase I do love. But what this means at its most basic is, OK, if you're going to confirm an original contribution to knowledge, then you need to insert your research into already existing knowledge. And therefore, you need to know the already existing knowledge. Yeah. So you can't prove originality unless you can confirm your expertise in already existing knowledge. OK. And that expertise in already existing knowledge is demonstrated through, you've guessed it, references. So we're looking for the major suite of references of names in your disciplines. We need to know, we need to confirm that you know what you're doing. So the challenge for students, I think, is we all as scholars have a list of key references in our head, right? So all of us have a list of scholars, pick a topic, that we are looking for, okay? And really, we don't share that list of names, darling names. We don't share that list as often as we should. But we have these expectations in our head, okay, when we come to examine your thesis. And this may be called disciplinary literacy. But what happens is, what we're after is, we need to see that research and academic literacy is aligning with disciplinary literacy. Do you have the knowledge you need to make the claim for originality? So we need to see that you know what you're talking about, that you have a grasp of your discipline. And at that point, when you've got a grasp of your discipline, you can place your new knowledge in context. Okay, four. Okay, this is the biggie. Four. Scope and scale. Scope and scale. This is huge. I'll tell you why. As a dean, I probably read more PhD examination reports than just about anybody on the planet, right? So I read all disciplines, all examiner reports. And what is happening is whenever I read reports that are unfavourable, so I see what are often called split decisions. So one examiner loved it, one examiner really didn't, or both examiners really didn't like it too much. When I see those problematic reports, one phrase is common to them all, regardless of the discipline. And that is the phrase scope and scale. So the sentence reads something like, this thesis does not demonstrate the scope and scale that I require from a doctoral thesis. Something like that. Scope and scale. Now, this phrase is code, and it's code that a student has not read enough, has not referenced enough, that it's a small project, and in fact it's too small for a PhD. Now, I failed a PhD this year, and it's very rare. They're not good years. I've only failed very few in my career, but I failed one this year. Shocking. And there was a lot wrong with the thesis. There was a lot wrong with the thesis. 
but actually it was failed the moment I read the reference list. Uh, when I read the reference list, I went, wow, we're in trouble here. And can I say, that reference list, I would have failed in an honours thesis. Okay? It lacked scope and scale. It lacked the depth of expertise required to demonstrate that you have an original contribution to knowledge. It also lacked scale, because the references confirmed that you know what you're doing. You understand how your research fits into knowledge. It has depth, it has breadth. So scope and scale is confirmed by your reference list. And five, last one, currency and contemporary engagement with ideas. So yes, references confirm scope and scale. But there are specific types of references that we're after that relax us as examiners. And what we're looking for particularly, we want the scope and scale, but we also want recent references. One of the reasons we try and encourage students to finish theses quickly is so that their thesis appears contemporary, it appears current, right? Real problem. So the difficulty with long candidatures when students are enrolled for a long time is that the references appear dated. So if you started your thesis in 2013 and you've got references from 2014, that's okay if you submit in 2016. <laughs> but 2013, if you're submitting in 2021, appears pretty dated. That's why get everything as tight and clean as you can. But there are tricks that you can enable to get those recent references in. And you need to get references in from the year you are submitting. The moment an examiner sees the year they're reading it, there's a reference, we relax a lot. So if you are proving originality, it's got to be original in the present, right? It's got to be original in the present of your discipline. It's got to be original in the present of your knowledge system. So please make sure that there are references in the year you are submitting the thesis and make sure certainly you have that historically important material from your discipline, but you've got to have the current stuff before you submit. And as I said, I can't tell you what it does to an examiner when we're reading an introduction and they're peppered through it and peppering is a great idea. Peppered are references from the year in which I am reading it. I go, right, this person's got control of the story. We're winning here. Because we know that the thesis is accurate and it's modern. So, as you can see, references are never just about references. References certainly signify your effort, your slog, your commitment, your work. They also confirm that you respect ethics that you understand academic and research integrity and they also confirm the quality of your research and the currency of your research. So as you can see, references are powerful. They enable your doctrine. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.